Hi there Curry fans, welcome back. It's Friday and we've got another video for you. Some more insights, tips and tricks from my curry man shed at the bottom of the garden. So let's get straight into the video. Have you noticed sometimes, perhaps when you've been to an Indian restaurant or a takeaway and you're eating your curry, perhaps it's chicken, it could be lamb, that the meat lacks flavor or it's tough or dry or stringy if it's chicken. We've all had that experience, right? Well, oftentimes that's because they're using, in the case of chicken, frozen chicken. And the problem with frozen chicken, I know because we ran a takeaway for some years, so we tried all of this and made mistakes, but often with frozen chicken, and most takeaways are using frozen chicken and even restaurants, is that it's um, salinated. It's, it's, it's frozen in a mixture of water and salt to preserve it, to help preserve it. But the problem with that is that the salt extracts the moisture or the natural fluids out of the, the meat. So when you defrost it and then cook it, it's very dry and it's very stringy. So the first thing I would just say is avoid frozen chicken. You, you're gonna get a much better result if you just use fresh chicken. And the better restaurants and the better takeaways will be doing that, they'll be using fresh chicken. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, because obviously in most takeaways and restaurants, the meats are pre-cooked to save time, and there's nothing wrong in that, um, if they're pre-cooking inferior quality chicken or lamb, and perhaps it's kept for too many days, again, it will lose flavor. So we're gonna look at today how we can pre-cook the chicken, uh, and the same principle applies to lamb, but also the importance of marinating it before, because that's where we get flavor into the meat. And the process that we're gonna to follow today is very, very simple, nothing complicated about this, but just a few little tips for you that will help you get the best results. So let's just have a look at what we've got. So we've got garlic, we've got some turmeric powder, we've got some coriander powder, some cumin powder here, and just a little bit of red Kashmiri chili powder. Those are our spices that we're gonna to use to marinate our meat along with the garlic. We've got some um, rapeseed oil here. We'll just mention why we've got that in just a moment. And then we've got some natural low fat yogurt. Now, what I will say is that two of these ingredients here are the most important when it comes to flavor and tenderness in your pre-cooked chicken or lamb. And those two ingredients are the yogurt and the garlic. Now, I don't use ginger in my um, marinade or in the pre-cooked method. Um, and the reason for that is I'm looking to try and get that garlicky flavor. So you'll notice that some of the best Indian restaurants and takeaways, when you eat the meat, there's that real garlicky flavor. And that's what we're going for. So what we've got here is two tablespoons um, of uh, minced garlic. That's just pure minced garlic, nothing else added to that. And we have our natural yogurt. And those two ingredients will uh, really be the key ingredients that we wanna make sure that we include in our marinade, particularly the yogurt, because the yogurt with the, pre, uh, the, the probiotics in there is what will tenderize our meat. Now, there isn't a shortcut, I'm afraid. You want to at least marinate this chicken for four hours, that's the absolute minimum, but I would always leave it overnight. Now, sometimes when we're, we're making a meal, we don't think that far ahead, but if you've got people coming around, you want to impress them, you certainly want to try and marinate your chicken overnight, because one, it will be much more tender, and two, much more flavorful. But if you can't do that, and you haven't got time, four hours minimum. So, we're gonna use garlic to infuse this flavor into our meat and the yogurt will tenderize it. Now, you might be thinking, I don't want yogurt in my curry, so why am I gonna use yogurt in the marinade? Well, don't worry about that because when we pre-cook it, it will wash, if you like, all the yogurt residue off the chicken and the same applies to the lamb. Now, spices, what spices have we got? We've got our turmeric, coriander, cumin, and chili. We don't really need to overthink this. Uh, when it comes to the pre-cook, you can put a few whole spices in there and we'll do that. But really, we're just looking to add some flavor. Uh, and the coriander and the cumin are the key flavors we're looking for here. The 
the chili, the Kashmiri chili, will also tenderize the chicken. So that's why we're using that. We're only using a little bit because we don't want heat, too much heat, because the curry that you're making might not be a spicy hot curry. And then the turmeric will add some uh, background flavor, just a nice slight nutty flavor, but a nice color. We get some great color. Now, why the oil? Well, the oil, we're using the oil to uh, coat our meat, our chicken, as you'll see in just a moment, so that our spices adhere to the meat. Now, some chefs, and I've done this in the past, you'll notice they'll just add all these spices into the yogurt, make a paste with the yogurt, and then add that on top of the meat. But I don't do that, and the simple reason I don't do that was a chef showed me, and it was a Pakistani chef, he said that we always rub our spices into the meat. We put a little bit of oil on there and we rub the spices into the meat so that the, the spices and the flavors and the garlic go, are going and making contact with the meat. They're not just in the yogurt. So that's what I would suggest that you do. Now, you'll also notice there's something missing here that often some chefs will recommend that you put in a marinade and that is salt. But I don't do that for the simple reason is that salt nat naturally extracts moisture out of the meat. And if we're using meat that doesn't have skin on it, for example, you're not frying chicken or something like that, um, then you don't want to use the salt because that will naturally dry out. We're gonna use salt, obviously, in our pre-cook, we'll use salt in the actual dish. So there's no need to actually add salt to the chicken or the lamb because it will dry it out. But if you're frying chicken or something like that and you want crispy chicken, then obviously you can use salt there on the chicken because it will help crisp it up but that's not what we're going for today so let's mix these ingredients together with our chicken so with this recipe uh, for marinating chicken we've got 600 grams of really nice fresh chicken thigh 600 grams should do two or three people easily we're using the thigh because there's more flavor there's more fat in there there's a lot of, it's a lot more juicy and tasty than just chicken breast. Now, I'm afraid with this method, folks, you're gonna really have to get your hands in there, hence you see I've got the gloves on. And you always, always are advised to have a bleach soaked cloth handy to make sure that you wipe all surfaces when you're handling raw chicken. Um, but I've got some gloves on here. So the very first thing that we wanna do, we've got two tablespoons of rapeseed oil, and we're just gonna pour that over our 600 grams of chicken thigh. This will help our spices adhere to the chicken. Uh, so they just rub the chicken in the oil so that it's all coated in that oil. Okay. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is put our powdered spices into the chicken. So we've got our turmeric, there's just half a teaspoon, scant half teaspoon uh, of turmeric. There's a good teaspoon of coriander powder, a good teaspoonful of cumin powder, and just a scant half teaspoon of red Kashmiri uh, chili powder. So just put the powdered spices in first and just massage those powdered spices so that they evenly coat your chicken. And again, the same applies if you're doing lamb or beef or turkey, any meat you like really, but just make sure that you, you massage that in to the meat. And this is before, as we said, before we put the yogurt on. So we're actually making sure our spices make contact with the meat and it's all nicely coated. Okay, so once we've Put our powdered spices in there. Next, we're just gonna add in our two tablespoons of minced garlic. That's just, as I said, minced garlic, nothing else in that. And now you want to just rub that also in to the chicken. Make sure that it thoroughly coats it. And you'll find, honestly, it's, it's garlic that's giving the flavor to these really, in your, in, you know, these really tasty Indian restaurants and takeaways that you like. It's often it's garlic that's giving the flavor to the meat, to the chicken. 
Uh, that's why we're not using ginger in our marinade. There we have, so we've coated all of that. And then the final stage is just to add in our yogurt. And essentially, it's just you don't need a lot. We've got about, perhaps about three or four tablespoons of natural low fat yogurt. And again, just, just massage that. Before we cook it in our pre-cook, which is the next stage, um, we want to make sure that we've taken it out of the fridge and we've left it to rest at room temperature for at least an hour. If you put cold meat that's straight out of the fridge into the cooking pot, that can make it go tough. This is another little tip I just want to share with you. So what we've got on the flame here is just an enamel karahi dish. Again, you can use a pan, anything you want really to pre-cook your chicken or your lamb. We've just got some base gravy in there. Very simple this. And we're gonna add to that base gravy um, some whole garam masala, um, which is basically a heat tablespoon of whole garam masala spices. And um, somebody did comment on my vid last video and said there's no such thing as whole garam masala. Uh, there is, and, and this is it really. It's the spices in the whole form. Obviously, you can have garam masala in powdered form, but essentially it's at least seven spices. Some garam masala recipes have got more, um, some have got less. But essentially what you've got is coriander seed, cumin seed, fennel, black peppercorns, we've got some cloves, we've got bay leaf, we've got cardamom. Those are generally the spices you'll find in your whole garam masala. So just include those in your base gravy, which we've got simmering away. So we're adding to our base gravy and the garam masala. We're adding our marinated chicken, which has been marinating overnight for 24 hours. But as, as I said, you can get away with it for four hours. So just add that in the pan. Make sure that all the chicken thigh or lamb or whatever meat you're using is just about covered by the base gravy. As you can see, we're just covering the meat. We don't want this swimming in base gravy. And we're gonna cook this in, in with regards to chicken for just 10 minutes on a medium heat because we're not wanting to overcook it. This is another mistake often made by many an amateur chef is that they will overcook the chicken or meat in an effort to try and make it tender, but that makes it dry. And in, in the case of chicken, it goes a bit stringy as well. So just 10 minutes will do on a medium to high-ish heat. Um, in enough base gravy to just cover it. Now what we want to do is we want to at the same time reduce this gravy that's cooking our chicken um, so that we can use some of this liquid in our curry because we're gonna obviously extract a lot of the chicken flavor into this. We can then use this in our curry and that obviously makes sure that the curry and the chicken taste like they've been cooked together. Now, if you're cooking lamb, you can follow this exact same process here, but you will need to cook for at least one and a half hours on a medium heat because lamb takes a lot longer to cook uh, than, than chicken. So you will want to cook that for at least one and a half hours, depending on the size of the pieces of the lamb that you're using, if they're like one, one and a half inch pieces. So we'll show you what that looks like once it's pre-cooked in about 10 minutes. So it's been about 12 minutes. We cooked it just a little bit longer uh, because some of these chicken uh, thigh pieces are quite large. As I said, we don't really want to thoroughly cook this chicken. We just want it slightly undercooked because remember it's going in a curry and that, that way we will avoid dry, tasteless meat. So um, if we just have a look now, we just sort of just put our knife in 
we'll see that it's quite white. Uh, as you can, I don't know if you can see that there, but it's not 100%. There's a little bit of pinkiness to it, which is what we want. And you'll notice also that our base gravy liquid has reduced quite a bit, which is what we want because we're going to use some of this in a curry. Uh, so what I would do now is I'd take the heat off, um, I'd take the chicken out, put that in uh, a Tupperware container, uh, let it cool down naturally before it goes in the fridge um, and keep a little bit of the liquid with the chicken to keep it moist. And then what you could do, and I'll often do, is take some of this pre-cut liquid and reduce that separately further into a nice, thick, umptuous stock that we can add a good chef spoon amount or a little bit more in a curry just to get that really lovely flavor of the meat into our curry. So I hope you enjoyed that video and got something out of it. I do realize for many of you, you will already know about marinating and pre-cooking. However, those little tips about, for example, putting the spices directly onto the meat, onto the chicken, uh, while, rather than just mixing them in with the yogurt, and also not using salt in the marinade, you'll notice a difference, believe me. So try that for yourself. So I look forward to seeing you next week, next Friday, for another video.